Hello everybody, it's your boy the Green Times coming to you with a video that a lot of us need to stop thinking about before we go any further or any of a stretch with in particular um coach that a lot of people seem to be clowning. Um if you guys remember the Eagles hired Jonathan Gannon, um uh, former defensive best coach for the Indianapolis Colts to head defensive coordinator for the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, the strange thing that I have been seeing on YouTube and all over Facebook, that a lot of, a lot of people seem to be clowning this guy. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, the guy started off in the first six, seven games of the Philadelphia Eagles that he knows exactly what to do with the Eagles defense as far as putting everybody and putting all defenders in zone coverage and just rushing four. Now you gotta look at it this way. When he put the Indianapolis Colts, the Colts had a top five ranked um, defense or defensive backs pretty much in the NFL. The man had some pretty good defensive back. The man had some pretty good, yeah, two pretty good safeties, two pretty good cornerbacks on, on, on the side. You know what I'm saying? So he did so, so he did well leading the Colts defensive backs. You know what I'm saying? And they were top five. I think they had like eight. Nine, maybe ten picks. Um, in the last year that he was the Indianapolis Colts defensive back coach, and they, they were ranked pretty good. You know what I'm saying? Because he did real well orchestrating the, the defensive back that he had. But you gotta look at this year at defensive coordinator. He kind of put like everything kind of like was a mystery to him, so he didn't know exactly what what, what to do. With the first sweep from, from the six weeks, seven weeks of games of the of the season just passed. You know what I'm saying? So. Now, with him being considered for a head coach in the NFL, he had three interviews already, with the last interview being the Houston Texans. And so, um, and from what, from what I've heard, he's also the front runner for the Houston Texans job. And so, I'm not going to hate on this guy, you know what I'm saying? Because, see, they always say, where you do bad at one place, you can go to somewhere else and flourish. And that's for a player or a coach. So we can't really say anything bad or anything about Jonathan Gannon. We can't. But don't get me wrong. The guy tried his best with this Eagles cornerback situation as well as um, the entire defense as a whole. So being promoted from defensive back coach to defensive coordinator, that's a bit. Big, 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 big key. You know what I'm saying? So, um, you got to look at it this way. When the Eagles hired Andy Reid from the Green Bay Packers back in, back in 98, 99, the guy was a very good quarterback coach. He had to get promoted from an assistant offensive coach to, uh, I think, quarterback coach. I think that's what it was. If the quarterback coach to head coach. The Eagles took a chance on Andy Reid. And you gotta look at what Andy Reid has done from 1999 to 2000 on down to what he is now. One of the, one, one of the winningest coach in NFL history and a part of the future Hall of Famer because he has won Super Bowl. Where well, he took in two teams to the Super Bowl. He won and won the Super Bowl. One and one. No, I'm sorry. He's one and two. One and two. Um, the, because the Chiefs won the Super Bowl last year and lost to Tampa Bay Buccaneers. So, uh, so he's one and two in the Super Bowl. And has 200 some wins, um, less than 200 losses, somewhere longer than that. And I think one, I think, I, I, I think he has two ties. You know what I'm saying? So we really so. And the moral of the story, what I'm saying is, let's not talk bad about Jonathan Gannon yet, cause we don't know what this guy can do. I mean, this guy can go to, like I said in this video, he can go from where he is, where he, he did, you know, subpar defensive play calling to being a head coach with the Houston Texans because a lot of NFL teams now are going for coaches that's between 35 to 45. It's a young, this is, this is a, the league is changing. So did they get it? So all teams are trying to get the next best thing, that offensive mind and defensive mind in the NFL. So we can't say anything bad about John together. We can't. And I'm not going to start by saying it. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I mean, I don't want... I, I've been on YouTube, and I've seen a, a lot of YouTubers talk bad about John DeGannon. 
That's your prerogative. I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. So, let's put it this way. If Jonathan Gannon wants to go to the Houston Texans, says, for example, the Houston Texans, in the next couple of years, the Houston Texans have a top five ranked defense or top ten defenses, defense, and y'all going to be out there saying, damn, why did he do this with the Philadelphia Eagles? Why did he call deep praise with the Eagles? Why did he bring more blitzes, more uh, pass rush to opposing defense, to opposing offenses? A lot of y'all going to be saying that, you know what I'm saying? Because we have said that about many players that have left the Eagles and, and have gone to other uh, other teams and flourished. Like, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, Roswell Douglas. You just cut Roswell Douglas. And he he, 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 been to, he, he, he with the Carolina Panthers. And he was with the Carolina Panthers. Now he with the Green Bay Packers. And the man got six interceptions with the Green Bay Packers. So... Then you got the other boy, uh, uh, the Eagles drafting the second round, the defensive back, who was probably a first round pick, but wound up hurting his knee, blew his knee out, and the Eagles got him in the second round. The guy doing that, I forgot that, I just got that boy name, but he's doing real well in the NFL. So we can't be talking bad about players and coaches because of, what, because of, of, of how bad or how so far they did with one team. We can't say that. So, we, so we, we really need to stop talking about coaches and players because they can go somewhere else and tear up the NFL. So that's a good chance. Jonathan Gannon could go to the Houston Texans, and he could really, really produce a top ten rank off from the top top ten rank defense with all the right with the right uh, personnel, coaching personnel. You never know what he could do. You know what I'm saying? So. Think about Nick Sirianni. The Eagles took a chance on Nick Sirianni. Nick Sirianni ain't even 35 years old yet. The Eagles took a chance on Nick Sirianni. And look how long it took for Nick Sirianni to develop a, a repertoire with the uh, with the offensive staff and with the offensive players. The Eagles became a top five. The Eagles became a top five. Well, he became a top five, number one overall ranked rushing offense in the NFL. We run the ball like crazy. You know what I'm saying? And so that's what, that's what it's going to take. And then you gotta look at both Jonathan Gunn and did with the um, with the Eagles defense in the first six seven games of the of last season, and then and on down the road he started getting a whole lot better with the defense. So it takes maturation to become a defensive coordinator and from defensive coordinator to head coach, as well as offensive coaches. It takes time. You, you just can't jump into uh, to a, a, a new situation and think things are gonna flourish. So we can't really say anything bad for Jonathan Gannon. I'm not going to stop by saying anything about Jonathan Gannon. It's not my, it's not my repertoire. I know what I'm saying. You can go back to all my videos and you can say them. You, you can see where I didn't dog the man out. But I, what I say is something that he probably should have done better with the defense. But if for a bashing his name on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, or whatever, it don't make no sense to do that. It doesn't. This man could go into the league and he could. He, he could tear up the NFL with a top five ranked defense. It takes time to build a defense. So, if the if the, if 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 the Houston Texans don't hire Jonathan Gannon and, and if the Eagles get better defensive personnel yeah. on the field, like a better like another linebacker, uh, a good another defensive end, another defensive tackle, and possibly a cornerback in the safety, a new cornerback in the safety, drafted in these next four or five rounds in the NFL next, uh, this year draft. Imagine what he can do with this defense. He can do a whole lot better. He can have he have a new personnel, and he can pretty much put in place of what he wants to do defensively. Cause see, you got to think about it. he came to the he came to the Eagles. The Eagles had a bunch of veterans on this team. It's it's more difficult to bring in a new defensive style to the NFL when you used to an old defensive style. You got to think about it now. Um, the Eagles went to went through three different coaches, four different coaches. Well, yeah, three different coaches, and all three, three, three different coaches for all three different styles of defense. Um, so you gotta look at you gotta look at that. So that that that's what I'm talking about. Uh, when, when the Eagles had Jim Shorts, Jim Shorts didn't then bring many blitzes. He he mostly brought front four pressure. When the Eagles had uh 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 uh. uh, uh Chip Kelly, 
Chip Kelly had that um forget that that defensive uh, uh, all that guy name, but he was the defensive coordinator. He just had a three four defense. When you just have three four defense, the, the Eagles defense flourished. Now on the first year, the second year in Chip Kelly's three four game. Then I then I then Chip Kelly came in the Reed, and the Reed had the um uh, the cornerback. I mean he had Jim Johnson. Jim Johnson had the cornerback zone blitz, or you could say the uh, DB zone blitz where. Eagles had a chance to put pressure, but they could bring two blitzes. They could bring a cornerback blitz from either side, or they could bring a defensive back blitz, or like a safety blitz, or they could bring a linebacker blitz. So, that's three different schemes that the Eagles have, 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 tra have transitioned to before Nick Sirianni came with, with um, John DeGannon. John DeGannon bring another defensive scheme, and it's like it's a it's not a pressure scheme. But it's more like a more a more of a zone based game is what he bought. And that's why Fletcher Cox couldn't get pressure on quarterback because he was he was he was told to rush the passer but not rush. To stand there and just look at the look at what, what, what the ball is going to. So he was told to make more tackles than sacks. And that's why his sack total was, was down this year. They, 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 he got like three or four sacks this year. Three, four and a half sacks. He, he, he ain't got no one there. Five or six sacks that he normally gets, so you gotta look at that. You know what I'm saying? And then all these guys were veterans on this, the veterans on this team that Jonathan Gannon had. It's more difficult to teach veterans a new defensive scheme because it takes time. But when you bring in a young nucleus of defenders, the, the young nucleus would know how to run the defense. They would know how because they already it's already in their mindset. To run that scheme that John DeGan is bringing. So that's why I expect the Eagles to clean house this season. Um, Fletcher Cox may be gone this year. The Eagles may, the Eagles may draft a, a defensive tackle to actually going to take his spot. Think about Milton. Think about Milton Williams. Mr. 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 Williams got four sacks this year, I believe. I think he got four sacks. And that's, a, and that's not a rookie record for his sacks concern. I, I, I think the rookie record. Is six and a half, and that was set by um by uh, 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 either Fletcher Cox or or Reggie White years ago. That rookie rookie still whoever had that rookie rookie still saying it still stands. So Milton Williams did, didn't get nowhere near that sack total. I think he got like, like I said, he got about four sacks I believe this year, but that that's pretty impressive. So 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 if you look at Fletcher Cox production, if you look at Mr. Williams production, Mr. Williams. Production was, was a whole lot better than Fletcher Cox because Fletcher Cox was told to stand up and see where the ball is going and make the tackle or make the play. You know what I'm saying? And then Hargrove had six and a half sacks. I think he got seven sacks this year. Seven, seven eight sacks, which is, which, is, which is impressive because the teams have been able to run the ball on Hargrove and Fletcher Cox. And then, as I said, when you, when you run the ball between your tackles, you can't make no play. On the running back because he's he already through the gap and gone, and so that lessens that that lessens the pass rush and then you have to go after the running game. So that's, that's what this defense was based on this year. Now had they had a young nucleus of defenders in that in that in that front in that front four, it, it would probably it would probably it would probably would be a different outlook. So you gotta look at the, the game wise that John DeGannon Bought to, to, to the Eagles defense. It, it wasn't no pressure game. It was more like a sit back and zone coverage game than what he bought. Because of the defense that he had that was there already. Because, like I said, we had, we had a lot of veterans on the defense. So, coming from one team to another team as the head defensive coordinator, you're bringing your scheme and you're trying to adopt your scheme. And the team is already used to the old scheme. Remember now, now uh, um, Coach name. Um, Peterson bought another bought Jim Shorts and Jim Shorts had another different scheme. Remember, the, the, the Eagle defense was under uh, 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 um, Jim Shorts for four seasons. Four seasons. And, and, they, and they are used to that scheme. And that was a pressure scheme because Fletcher Carr had like six, seven sacks in last year with Jim Shorts. And now this year, he had like four, it would be luckily five sacks. I think he had four, four and a half sacks this year, I believe. I think, think, think that's a sack total, four and a half sacks. 
So it's so his number had dipped a bit because of the defensive scheme that Jonathan Gannon had bought because he was already used to an older scheme that June Schwartz had bought the past four years. So for us to bash Jonathan Gannon like this, this is not really this is not really cool. And I said, I'm not gonna do it. I can't do it. Y'all can do it. Matter of fact, I give y'all the privilege to, to talk about Jonathan Gannon. That's your prerogative, not mine. I'm not gonna bash the man because if he's a top candidate for the Houston job, and if he get the Houston job, and in two years, in two years, that he's been the head coach, that defense could be a top five ranked defense. And like I said in this, in this video earlier, a lot of y'all fans out there going to get to talk about, damn, why did he do this with the Eagles? Why did he? Why did he bring? Why did he? Well, why did he bring blitzes up the A and B gaps with the Eagles? A lot of y'all gonna be talking about that. And that's gonna and, and that's gonna make me to make another video about the fans. Right now, this this is just about one particular coach that the fans and um, content creators are bashing at this moment. Um, I'm not gonna bash him. I'm not gonna do it. So I would join the gang nothing but the best. If he does get the job at Houston, the Houston Texans, if he becomes their head coach, good for him. You know what I'm saying? Because like I said, this league is coming and getting to its own at bringing in younger talent on offense, younger talent on defense, younger talent on special teams, and a young coaching staff. So if John DeGannon does get the job with the Houston Texans, it's a possibility that he could get two or three players from the Eagles, two or three coaches from the Eagles, and take him with him to Houston. So... So that back right there could be a problem. That that could not be a problem, but it could be a situation where the Eagles are going to bring in some new talent on the coaching staff to help maximize what most coaches ain't been able to do. Like you got to look at Andy Reid. Andy Reid's situation was he let he had three coordinators go to become head coaches. Um, forgot the board. That's that's the board name. Um, Jim Harbaugh. J J J I'm sorry, John Harbaugh. John Harbaugh was with the Eagles, came through Andy Reid, and he left. And, and, and since he, and when he left, the Eagles special teams kind of went down in the dumps when he left because John, John John Harbaugh was the special teams coach. And when he left, he's in Baltimore. The man has 100 some wins with Baltimore, and he's he, he he won a Super Bowl with Baltimore. And and Baltimore had been to the playoffs every year that he'd been the head coach. And you got to look at the Eagles' other head coach. Uh, 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 um, forgot that board name. He went to coach the, 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 the Minnesota Vikings, and he coached the Minnesota Vikings for four years. And of the four years, he predicted only two winning seasons. But in four years, he'd been the Vikings, been the coach. Um, the Eagles have also had another coach to leave. Oh, uh, oh yeah, Leslie Frazier. Leslie Frazier left the Eagles. He, he, he was the Eagles uh, assistant, the defensive assistant, and went to coach in the NFL as a coach with the Minnesota Vikings as well. And after he coached Minnesota Vikings for, I think, for three years. And after three years, he produced one winning season. In three years. Uh, you got to look at, um, then you got to look at the other board now. I forgot his name. Um, he, he won, the Eagles hired him. He was on the Eagles staff all the time, and he wanted to become the defensive coordinator in the first year. And the Eagles fired him. I mean, he, uh, Andy Reid fired him. And when he fired, Eagles fired him, he went to become a defensive coordinator for the uh, Carolina Panthers. And now he left the Carolina Panthers, and he, but he's now with the Buffalo Bills. And he's and he's a very good coach with the Boston Bulls. Buffalo Bills. And he drafted um, Josh Allen, the guy that put in the man in using Jim Johnson's defensive scheme. And then he had Leslie Fra and He also bought when Les Frazier was a defensive coordinator, I think with the um I think he was with the uh, uh, uh um who was that he was with? I think it was I, th I think it was the Dolphins, I believe. I think he was the, the, the Dolphins defensive coordinator. I could be wrong as far as the team that he that he was defensive coordinator of, but he left them and now he with the uh Buffalo Bills, he's the defensive coordinator. So Buffalo Bills is running the old Jim Johnson defensive scheme. And that team, I miss so much. That, that team, I, I, I wish the Eagles have figured out some way to to, to hire Leslie Frazier, bone him in as our defensive coordinator. You know what I'm saying? Because because Jim Johnson defensive schemes work to a key. And if Jonathan Gannon does leave as head coach, defensive coordinator, the Eagles need to be trying to look at 
the Buffalo Bills, um, this defensive staff, and, and, and get that same scheme back. I really want Jim Johnson's scheme back. I really do. You know, because Jim Johnson's scheme was top notch. The man brought me back. Like I said, he brought the, it was the, it was the, the defensive game. back, cornerback zone blitz. And he was the architect of that scheme. And I really missed the defensive scheme. I really missed that defense with a key because that was a pressure defense. And Buffalo Bills runs a pressure defense. And that's why they're in the playoffs two of the last three seasons because of that defense. We all we know, we know defense win championships. You often pull up points, defense win championships because defense has, has to stop teams on first, second, third downs. And then if a team go forward on fourth down, the team got to stop them on fourth downs. So you got to look at all, you got to look at the possibility of what John DeGanna can do if he go to Houston Texas. The guy can make the Houston Texas defense a top five ranked defense. So we can't really say anything bad about this man. So I was so I was strongly advised to stop bashing this man, you know what I'm saying, and let him go. If, if, if he wants to go, let him go. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying, if he, if he don't get hired and if he still want to be in the defensive quarter, if he can bring in some a whole new star of young talent on this defense, the Eagles defense could be a top five rushing team, even though we finish in the top ten. The top ten is not bad, but I'd rather be a top five ranked defense. Top five gets you wins. So let's which let's hope that, that this guy does his best if he goes to Houston. You know what I'm saying? Because you, you never know. The Eagles could play the Houston Texans down the road. And if the Eagles get a – if the Houston wind up being a top five ranked Offense, I mean, top five ranked defense and offense that could be a trouble for the Eagles and for as the players concerned. You know what I'm saying? Because the Eagles had never lost to Houston Texas. The Eagles, like six, six and oh, I believe against Houston, I believe. Only the Eagles never lost to Houston. So the Eagles are on the field against the Houston Texas as well. But that streak could also snap if John Denver would go down there and put together a very good defensive plan <laughs> for the Houston Texans. So there's no need to back this guy right now. So we just need to really let him, if he chooses to go, let him go. Let him go. I'm not going to bash him. Because if the Eagles, because if he does go, the Eagles have, the Eagles could bring in another defensive coordinator that that could probably run a better scheme than what Jonathan Gannon bought this year for the Eagles as a whole. So I'm not going to bash the man. I'm not going to wish, wish him the best and hope that he succeeds where he goes. So without any further ado, Comment, like, share, subscribe. This is your boy, the Green Time Furniture, with a video about Jonathan Gannon. We really need to stop bashing the man, you know what I'm saying? And, and let, let him go peacefully if, if he decides to go. If the team, if Houston Texas hire him, good for him. He's getting, he's getting, they need to go out and find another defensive coordinator, a young man or an older man. That's their choice. So, y'all have fun. Enjoy your morning. I made the video kind of early in the morning. Right now it's, 10, it's almost 10.30, so I made the video early this morning. I just wanted to, to, to get this out of my mind and out of, I'll get it off my chest because it's like every time I'm hearing Jonathan Gannon's name getting bashed, we have Facebook fans, Facebook Eagle fans, we have Facebook, um, we have YouTubers. All these people are bashing Jonathan Gannon. So I'm not going to bash him. I just wish him the best of luck. And I, like I said, I hope you enjoy your day because I'm going to enjoy mine. Watching some um football today and tomorrow, and then next week it's a busy week week as well. So y'all have fun, enjoy your day. I'm out. Peace, one love.